here just outside of Queenstown, New Zealand today on the South Island of New Zealand. And today we're talking about how to find hidden waterfalls. We're gonna be exploring some of these side creeks here off of the root burn track in search of some waterfalls that most people don't usually see up close and personal unless they're all up in that creek. So when it comes to looking for hidden waterfalls, really, there's two main points that you have to keep in mind. And when I say them, it's gonna sound really simple and make a lot of sense. And that is elevation drop and water. If you're looking for waterfalls, one plus one equals two. You need water and you need a steep elevation drop. Most of the time that's gonna be found in some sort of canyon, crevice, gorge type situation where the water has flowed there for millions of years and etched out a deep scar in the mountain or the earth or whatever the type of rock that you're exploring is made from. Now oftentimes, because it is a hidden waterfall, that means typically it either doesn't have a name or it's not a highly trafficked waterfall, which doesn't have an established trail to it. So usually that's gonna mean root finding, bushwhacking, and oftentimes boulder hopping, rock scrambling, up some sort of creek or body of water. Today, we're lucky enough to have found some sort of small use trail here. It's not the official root burn track, that's across the river on the other side but definitely some people have explored this before, though as far as I know, the area we're going to does not have named waterfalls. So you're gonna need good skills, map reading skills, compass reading skills, navigational ability, you're gonna need maps, possibly GPS, know how to read a topo map, and usually I recommend if you're using a digital map like Google Maps on your phone, it's always recommended to bring a paper map back up in case your battery dies, you drop your phone in water, you always have that paper map back up. Always make sure you know where the water is relative to your navigation because that's gonna be the easiest way to navigate your way out. So if you know that the water's always on your right hand side, or in this case right now, I'm in the water, because I know where the water is, it's gonna be easy for me to backtrack where I started. So if I, I bushwhack a little and I lose the trail that I bushwhacked, I can always find the water and follow it back to where I started. Wow, we're already getting into some epic stuff today. So remember when I said one plus one equals two, we have water. Look at that up there. Elevation change, that equals waterfalls. Because it's not on an established track and they don't have a name, that's a hidden waterfall. One plus one equals two, let's do this. Well, we're already getting into some pretty interesting stuff. As that elevation change increases, you can see it's getting real pretty and real interesting real fast. But this is the time when you have to be the most careful because if you're going upstream, you have to make sure that you can get back down and not slip and not put yourself in a dangerous situation. As you can see, this rock hopping up creeks and rivers requires going across slippery rocks a lot of the time. And sometimes you're doing bouldering and scrambling up some pretty steep inclines on those slippery rocks. And for that reason, the proper footwear is essential to make sure you don't injure yourself and you don't put yourself in a really risky situation. I highly recommend 
anything with stealth rubber on the soles. In particular, what I use are the Adidas Terex Voyager for this type of creek walking, river rock hopping hunt for hidden waterfalls. I'll leave a link to that in the description, Adidas Terex Voyager, and make sure you get the version with the stealth rubber. The stealth rubber is superior on wet rocks like this. They are the perfect water shoe for adventures just like this. Anything involving wet rocks, mossy rocks, slippery rocks, highly recommend the stealth rubber on the Adidas Terex. If you're gonna be off trail, scrambling rock hop and looking for hidden waterfalls, the first thing you wanna do is leave a description of your plans with someone. Let them know the general idea, the GPS coordinates, where you're gonna be and what time you plan to be back. That way, in case anything goes wrong, they can give those coordinates to search and rescue. But, as long as you take precautions, you're properly geared up, that shouldn't happen. The big thing is the shoes because just regular sneakers are gonna be real slippery. You can slip, hit your head, uh, break your arm, break your leg, so, so being geared up on the feet is essential. Also essential is to have proper gear for what you're doing. So something like this, where there's an abundance of water flowing, I might not bring as much water as I normally would if I was in the desert or Tahunga or a real dry climate because I know as long as I have my water filtration, I can filter this water in. Most likely it's probably good enough to drink without filtration, but I would filter it anyway. So I can bring less water as long as I have my filtration, plenty of water to drink. But if you are going into a deserty climate, you want to make sure you bring more water than you need. Another pro tip, make sure that your fitness level is on par with what you are about to get into. If you can't walk five miles without being winded on flat surface, you are not ready for off-trail hidden waterfall hunting. You wanna be an experienced hiker, someone that's not using hiking as a way to get in shape. I know a lot of people use hiking as kind of a, a fitness workout to like go to the gym or they'll, they'll do a hike or they'll climb stairs or whatever. This is not to get in shape. This is only for people who are already in shape, experienced hikers, who are looking for that next level of challenge. And one last tip for right now is leave no trace, LNT. If you're an experienced hiker, you already know you wanna leave everything the way you found it. You wanna pack out your garbage. If you come across any garbage from someone who may have been there before you, you wanna pack that out as well. If you have to go to the bathroom, you wanna pack your paper out with you, which is why you bring a dedicated plastic bag to put that uh, soiled paper in. You don't wanna leave any paper, any garbage, anything that damages this ecosystem. You wanna tread lightly and softly and leave it the way you found it for future generations to come. For some of you, this might be really basic stuff, and I'm sorry if you thought it was gonna get more advanced, but you might be ready to take it to the next level, and that is technical canyoning or canyoneering, which involves gear and knowledge. To learn more about hunting for hidden waterfalls through canyoning, check out this playlist right here. That'll delve a little deeper into what canyoning is, what canyoneering is, and the beautiful things you can find. In the meantime, get out there, find your adventure, and be infamous. Infamous.